first set. We are in a tie match at the drop. Double oh. gen pop to avoid the deadlock. Oh. They do go down. There is a haste status effect. You gotta be careful here. The hatch is going to spawn momentarily. Deadheart could get them the distance to get it too. Smart Ooh, shot. Really smart play on the eight. Oh shot. my god, he's getting shot through the window. No longer have distortion. And they are gonna teleport here. I think they get there in time. <gasps> yes! Oh, oh, the yes! Oh, 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 this is that is disappointing. This is be a four man out because yeah but they will be able to oh, block yeah. this <laughs> yo getting caught on that Jeez. ace coming with the oh body block oh they oh. were here hey what is up guys it's guild spire here and welcome back to champions of the fog we are here for a round three of group b atmosphere versus iconic and we are kicking things off with a bit of a demo puppy mirror match on father campbell's chapel We'll be seeing Atmosphere kill first against Iconic Survivor Team. We are loaded in as we speak. While we do, set number two will be a Plague Mirror Match on the Ashra's Resting Place. And if we get there, a Artist Mirror Match in set number three on the Mount Ormond Resort, which has been re-added to the COTF map rotation. We saw Mount Ormond Resort in the last match of how do we get here versus Demise and was quite the treat. So hopefully we do get to see that as well. But without further ado, we are about to be loaded in. We will see shortly who is the best Demogorgon, Atmosphere or Iconic, and who will be going away a very sad Demo Puppy. Hope you all are having an amazing day, and thank you all, by the way, for sticking with us during that long break. We do appreciate it as we are getting closer and closer to becoming uh, able to apply for Twitch partnership, which is very exciting here over at Champions of the Fog. But with that being said, we are about to load on in at any moment. The bar is full, and we are now able to spectate. We see the Nia the Zarina, the Jake, Nancy, and finally, we see the Demoboy himself. We do also see a bit of corrupt intervention there in the distance. And I don't know if you see what I see, but I do see the Lycan allowing the Demogorgon to get a bit of aura reading off of their teleports, which will be very, very advantageous here. In Group B, we do allow some additional aura reading add-ons and perks that we don't in Group A. So in Group B, Demo does get a little bit of a push in their power that they wouldn't otherwise. And we'll see that come into play here as Demo will, in fact, teleport and get a read on where these survivors might be. They see a couple survivors back there towards Shaq and looks like Demo will try and go for them as we do see a skill check miss on the generator. That there being 10% off the gen, a total of 9 second regression. Definitely not insignificant to say the least. However, Demo having a little bit of trouble finding the survivor does find the Jake at Shaq. Jake will go for the vault and Demo getting the shred. Forcing the Jake back in the tile. That is going to be huge here for Demo, as we will see Jake throw the pallet if we are able to see Demo push him back into Shaq. I think that would be game over for the Jake. However, Jake moving back into main. We have yet to really see what the setup looks like. However, Demo going for a lunge and a whiff at the window. Quite unfortunate indeed, as Jake does get a little bit of added distance here as they do move up to the top of main building. Potentially a bounce landing play here to gain a little bit of distance. And sure enough, that appears to be the case as Jake is pretty far gone. As we do hear some additional progression there over in main. 
Demo, though, undeterred, wants to get the Jake down, not wanting to leave the chase. Main building actually pretty strong here for survivors, realistically speaking, if used well, and the Jake is using it to a T. Demo now how to make a choice, guard the gen or go for the Jake, and it looks like they will drop chase instead, hitting the gen as we will see it highlighted in yellow, that they're potentially being a eruption or call of brine but only time will tell. Demogorgon dropping chase with the Nia. Will get the hit on the Zarina. Beautiful shred there. However, Nia going back up to main, trying to get the gen completed in a timely manner. Demo going for the chase on Zarina over into Carnival. Really taking Demo into these previously corrupted gens as no down has happened so far. No down within the first two minutes of this match. Demo is definitely in a bit of a rough position. However, survivors will be keenly aware of the existence of Deadlock, which will slow things down just a little bit. Zarina moving back into Carnival. However, they're getting caught out here in a bit of a corner. Demo, though, a little bit confused to where they went, will lose the Zarina temporarily. And looks like Zarina will get caught here over at the carousel, or the carriage, rather. However, Demo going for an aggressive shred at the pallet. Honestly, I think if they would have lunged instead, they would have gotten the down. However, Zarina still up and running as we do see another deadlock. Apparently, deadlock hitting the gen over here as the Demo will insta-shred. Nancy coming in for a body block. Wanting to extend chase just a little bit more. Unfortunately, Demo unable to get the hit once again. And a third generator popping off. A, a little bit of a traffic jam there at the door, however. As we will see Zarina, Nia, and Jake now all injured. Do you want to note that Jake has been injured for quite some time now, actually? <sighs> Nancy going in for the body block. Not wanting to give the Demo even one hook. Three gens in. Nia getting healed potentially with that med kit that we saw earlier. And looks like we will see Zarina going for the window. However, not able to make it happen. Demo faking the shred and they will get the down. However, fourth gen completed. Demo is in a world of hurt. And they're going to have to make something out of nothing real quick. As we do see a missed skill check off the heel in Shaq. However, Demo paying it no mind. Will instead put down a portal and... Looks like they're just going to stick on by. Hoping to potentially progress the second stage here and or go for some hook trades. However, we have yet to see a deliverance and I imagine they will send their deliverance player in to get um, some value off it. And sure enough, that there looks to be, I want to say, the Nancy or the Nia. Demo, though, going for the vault here and Survivor going far away from these active gens. Demo really wanting to get this tunnel out on this arena and possibly will be able to do so here as they have waited out the 10 seconds for the down. If there is no decisive strike, that there will be the second hook for the Zarina in pretty quick succession. I do not think that these survivors have had a lot of time on gens. However, it is a bit of a 1-2 split. One gen in Carnival 2, two gens next to Shaq. And sure enough, that looks to be an injured Jake here. Though Demo wanting to go for the quick tunnel out is going back for the Zarina. We see three survivors off of gens. Zarina, Nia, and Nancy. However, Jake still injured over a carnival could potentially complete the gen. We will see an injured Nancy demo going for the shred, going for the fresh hook points, and that there will be the down as for the people will have saved the Zarina from getting tunneled out of this match. Demo has to be careful here now, though, as Jake has been left alone for quite some time. We will see the portal out trying to get there. However, last gen completed... Though we will note a bit of a haste status effect that there being good old Noed. Nia not knowing where Demo is. That's the first down. Huge play here for Demo. Honestly surprised not going for the fresh hook. Instead trying to hunt down the Jake here in the back of Carnival. Though seemingly losing the line of sight that there is the Jake. Not a lot of resources left here from earlier chases. Jake having to make something quick. And looks like they're going to be trying to go to the LT wall, though without any pallets in sight, I think they will be going down. Nancy is off the hook. 
I believe the Nia is still on the ground. This is going to be a fresh hook for both Jake and potentially the Nia as well. As far as where Noah is located, it looks like it's over there by the exit gate, just a bit to the right. And we will imagine to seeing the survivors cleanse it here momentarily. And sure enough, there it goes. Survivors utilizing the aura that Noah does give to their advantage. However, we do see both the Zarina as well as I believe the Nia here. Nia is the one that they need to chase for the most points possible. Zarina only worth one point. So at any point in time, they need to drop chase with the Zarina. They really do need to make use of it. However, this pal's still here and available to these survivors, costing the demo precious time and distance on these survivors. Serena, though, seemingly gone away from the Nancy. Potentially, these survivors trying to set up for the hatch escape. Though, Serena back once again. Demo taking the hit to reduce a body blocker. And looks like Nia is by herself once again. There is the vault. I imagine a vault back, though. Nia actually holding W, trying to make it their way to the exit gate. But going back to the window and Demo whiffing on the shred. Demo trying to make things work here in their favor. Make as many points as possible. However, Exegate open. Jake healed. And looks like Demo going to drop Chase as they're going to try and find an injured survivor. Though I do think it might be just a little too late. As the Exegates have been open. Survivors primed and ready to go. And that there will be a four man out in favor of Iconic. A difficult result for the demo, though only a seven-point difference in favor of Iconic at this point in time. With that being said, we are going to switch sides now with Iconic's Demogorgon against Atmosphere's Survivor Team. Iconic's Demogorgon only really needing to get a 1k2 hook in order to claim victory, but we'll have to see if Atmosphere's Survivor Team is able to rally back. With that being said, we are going to go on a quick break while we get this lobby set up. But while we do, I do want to remind everyone here today that, yes, you, the viewers, are our sponsors. So that as they watch all the bits that I tip, all the subs that you buy, as well as all the rogue energy that you buy, using the code COTF goes to supporting Champs of the Fog and our prize pools. With that being said, we'll be back in just a bit.
right, and we are back. This time, Iconics Demogorgon versus Atmosphere Survivor Team. As mentioned earlier, Iconics Demogorgon will only need to get a 2K2 hook. Or 2K... Yeah, a 2K... And actually, a 1K and two hooks on a other survivor. So definitely quite doable. I imagine that Atmosphere Survivor team is going to have to go for a lot of body blocks to extend chases as much as humanly possible. But with that being said, we will not have to wait long to see what they are capable of. And I do want to note right away, we are not seeing the Lycan on this Demogorgon, which is quite interesting as it is allowed and quite the valuable add-on to boot. However, though, looks like Demo going to be going on a bit of a home remodeling session before trying to find these survivors. Currently, no sign of them as Corrupt Invention will move into about a quarter of the way through. These survivors doing a good job of hiding it out. This is where Lycan kind of does add some value to Demogorgon, basically getting a built-in... A uh, lethal pursuer. However, Demogorgon here in a survivor here on the main gen. That there is the Dwight, I do believe. And looks like they will be dropping down. Could be a bounce land. Does appear to be that way. Demogorgon canceling the shred as they knew they were not going to be able to make it. And looks like Demo will end up transferring over to the ace who is walking away potentially with a sprint burst in hand. Demo going for the shred, unable to land it. And looks like we will see a kick of the gen highlighted in yellow. Once again, could be a colorblind, could be a eruption. However, Ace will take the hit. Keep in mind, Ace does have a med kit in hand and thus does need to be a survivor that does need to be kept on, lest they do lose a lot of free pressure. That being said, though, looks like Demo potentially lost so sight of Ace as they are now on this tile. Ace, though having to be very careful here as this is where demo did get the shred earlier and will be trying to do so again though this time missing ace being very greedy not dropping the pallet and demo just not able to land that shred this is amazing chase here by the ace as the entirety of corrupt intervention is just about over a full two minutes have almost passed since the ace has started in this chase and looks like Ace going to be trying to use this pallet to their advantage. However, getting caught out in the corner here. And now making it way back over to this tile without a pallet, though. I do not foresee them going very far. Ace trying to go for a 360. Unable to do so. And that will be the first down of this match. Demo, though, really could just camp out the Ace in full. And go for a second hook towards the end game. Two gents popping off, no sign of deadlock. And that there, we will see a damage generator score event suggesting Scourge Hook Pain Residence. Scratch marks moving away from the gen. Demo taking a look at their first hook of this match, the ace. Trying to identify where the Dwight may have gone. And looks like they did, in fact, drop down for the unhook. Demo not able to camp two second stage on the ace. And looks like they will find the Adam instead, potentially with a deliverance. Adam, though, getting caught at the window, unable to vault it for one reason or another. Maybe not looking in front of them enough, as we will see Adam move towards Shaq. This area is a little bit weaker in comparison, as a lot of the pallets have been dropped and shredded. Adam going back into Shaq, trying to go for the window vault. I imagine Demo with the shred, but Adam making a very good read. Instead, going for the pallet, forcing Demo to break and moving into the next tile. A bit of a firecracker play to try and blind the Demo. And an Adam caught out at the corner, not knowing where the Demo had gone. That is quite unfortunate for the Adam, but a great find for the demo as this will be their second hook. At this point in time, they only need to claim one fresh survivor and camp them to death in order to claim victory. However, these survivors not going down without a fight as they continue to try and progress main generator to completion. However, between Call of Brian and Scourge Hook Pain Residence, Things are just not looking that great for these survivors as of this moment. 
Demo with another attempted shred, unable to land on the ace. Ace going for the pal, but not dropping it. And looks like we did hear a noise notification in the distance. Could have been a missed skill check. No, in fact, it is the Colorblind skill check noise notification telling Demo that there is a survivor up there. Ace doing a great job, though they will take an F1 hit here at this window. Two gens back to back, pretty heavily progressed. Ace still sticking to this tile. And Demo with their aggressive shred attempt, unfortunately unable to make it work. As it appears that Adam may have left the tile entirely. And looks like they, in fact, will be moving to Carnival as Kate might end up taking Chase instead. As Demo will have to force them off this generator to get Call of Brian value. And sure enough, here is the Kate. So far, Atmosphere's Survivor Team doing an amazing job here, keeping the Demo at bay. However, that shred was huge for the Demogorgon, as they'll now be able to chase a fresh Survivor. And as mentioned prior, all they need to do is camp, hook and camp a, a fresh Survivor to death, and they will claim victory for set number one. However, Kate using this tile very well as we do see main generator completed as well as the call of Brian Gen to the side. That leaves only one generator left. Demogorgon going for the lunge, unable to do so, will take the stun from the Kate. These survivors very well might get a four man out, securing victory for set number one. It is not outside the realm of possibility. Kate, though, trying their best to make use of the main top, the main building here. But Demo going for the shred, thinking they're going to go for the window. In fact, did not. Kate now left in the middle of nowhere. However, Adrenaline! Kate getting caught on some geometry, a little bit of a rubber band, methinks. And that there will be no ed for the down. Exegate seemingly on the other side of the map. Demo going for an aggressive hook here, trying to ensure that they are unable to get the Noed and the unhook together. However, Kate might get off his shoulder if he's not careful. Unfortunately for Kate, though, that there will be the hook, and I think the camp to boot. If you look back at the scorecard for trial number one, I do believe this will result in a win for atmosphere or actually for iconic here as there was no one who died on hook it's gonna be very close could potentially even be a draw but we'll have to wait and see as the score does get tabulated via our excel scorecard and with that that will be 28 points for atmosphere and 30 points for iconic a two point difference and if that being said that there will be the end of set number one as iconic will take the w with that being said though we do have another potential two sets as we'll be moving into set number two iconic once again killing this time as the plague on azarov's resting place so with that being said we are going to go on a quick break but before we do do want to remind everyone here today that we are partnered with pugdom pugdom is a dead by daylight community very much like ours and they are hosting the second half of group b over on their channel so if you guys haven't already make sure to stop on by say hi drop a follow that way you can catch all the matches that season five has to offer with that being said we'll be back in just a bit
All right, and we are back once again. This time with Iconics Plague versus Atmosphere Survivor Team on the Azeroth's resting place. This will be another mirror match of the plagues. The Vami Mommies themselves will be duking out, see which one can vomit the furthest. With that being said, we will not have to wait long to jump on in as we are about loaded up. As a reminder, Iconic did take set number one by a total of two points. We'll see if they can do it again. And uh, looks like the plague has some candy for the survivors. Uh, a globe filled with gumballs that she will bash amongst their heads. And speaking of, we do find two survivors very early. The Adam here with medkit in hand will take a very quick injure as they will move away from the excavator. Adam still in chase in a bit of dire straits. And Plague, with the attempted mind game, though, looks like they will not fake out the Atom. Doing some 360s, trying to make this chase short. However, that there will be the pallet drop by the Atom. Getting caught out at the loop. And that there will be the first down by Squiro. Amazing job here by the Plague. And a whole lot of pressure to boot. These survivors are in a world of hurt if chases last this long. With that being said, here will be the first hook of this match. And a Scourge Hook Pain Resonance as we see that sc uh, score event notification there. Nia taking a hit and looking to one for one trade quite early. Potentially a deliverance in the hands of the Nia. Adam faking out that uh, pallet right there to a T. Amazing job making use of something very, very weak. Unfortunately for the survivor, this will be another Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. Once again, regressing the most progression by a total of 15%. And looks like Plague will be going for another hit of the gen here. Survivors will be keenly aware of the existence of uh overcharge here in just a few moments as far as what's highlighted jet in yellow that there must be a eruption as call of brian overcharge is a banned combo with that being said though looks like claudia is now in chase plague trying their best to get them broken so claudette doing a good job of extending the chase again and again however we do want to make note of the chase here on the kate K already, I believe, in chase once before, but evading the plague. And looks like they will be dodging the shack. No, sticking to shack, in fact. This is a bit unfortunate as this gen will be regressing upwards of 200% over 60 seconds with overcharge. And K getting faked out a little bit. Looks like plague will be able to get the M1 hit at the shack, injuring the K. Three survivors also injured via the broken stats effect. This is a huge play here for the Plague. Also want to note that a lot of their Corrupted Pools are here on this side. So I imagine Plague might want to keep this side of the map for themselves. Those survivors definitely making that quite difficult. As we do see Adam here once again. Potentially trying to go for the Pallet Stun. Plague though playing a dangerous game. And Adam will go down and Eruption proccing across two generators two survivors will be incapacitated for 25 seconds as they watch the gen regress at 0.3 percent per second this plague woke up and chose violence today to say the least however completing one gen here and looks like they have found the kate as well as the claudette Plague going for a long range shot will indeed get the down. Kate going back towards Shaq. However, this is going to be quite dangerous as there's still about 15 seconds of the corrupt purge left. Kate though holding their ground. Plague trying to get the down and will successfully do so. That now leaves the Nia all by their lonesome as three survivors unable to do much of anything. Claudette picked back up though. Potentially an unbreakable looks to be the case as she is going back towards this gen 
Keep in mind, Adam also still on hook. About only five seconds left. Though it looks like they will get there in time. Krupp Perch just narrowly missing the Nia. Though they will go down at the pallet. A pickup on the Kate. A BT hit on the Adam. And looks like Plague will take what they got here and go for the fresh hook on the Nia. Oh, sorry. Second hook on the Nia, to be exact. Hard to keep track with all the survivors going down and getting picked back up sometimes. But that being said, with only one gen completed, four hooks in, these survivors definitely in a bit of a situation. And Plague, once again, on the prowl with about 15 seconds of their Corrupt Purge in hand. This survivor, though, trying to be very careful not to get sniped this time. Though getting faked out there with the 360. Corrupt Purge barely touching them. Another attempt. The last attempt. And unfortunately, just unable to get the down. Claudette, though, will end up in a corner here. I do not foresee them getting very far. And that will be another two generators regressed by 10% from Eruption. Really great job from this plague, putting the pressure on these survivors. These gens, multiple of them, almost complete time and time again. However, survivors just unable to fight through the gen regression the plague has available to them. We do see the plague moving back towards this gen here, though it does not look like there's a lot of progression to be had. However, there is in fact a survivor lurking around plague trying to go for the mind games will successfully get them off of the tile however they will get a little bit of distance there with their exhaustion perk though no pallet there to be had nia trying to get somewhere quickly however they will end up going down and this here will be the last hook for nia as she will be sent back to the campfire via the entity Survivor successfully completing one generator here and getting the unhook on the claw debt. Plague weighing their options here, opting to go for the unhook instead of the completed generator. And looks like they have found the Atom once again. This time moving over towards the shack and going for a bit of a mind game kind of confused there for a second of what was going on but playing just up to their tricks and looks like adam has been hooked twice thus far and that will mean that if the plague is able to catch up to him he'll be sent back to the campfire much like nia before him and with no pallets in sight looks like adam will go back to the comp corner and will take the down Question is, are there any hooks nearby that the play can make use of? And sure enough, there's the one on the left. And I think their only option available to them here. If survivors do play smart, they could potentially use that corner to force some bleed outs. But only time will tell if they take that route. Plague, not knowing where these survivors are, are going to go over to the other side of the map to see what gens they might be able to regress. And sure enough, here is a infected gen and scratch marks to boot. The question is, is it the Kate or is it the Claudette? Kate being fresh is probably the priority chase here. However, this survivor committing to the gen, it is the Kate who will get additional two points for their team. That is three gens completed now, putting their killer in a little bit of a better position for the nice. next trial. Kate also playing a very dangerous game as the plague here, trying to get the mind games, will get the down on the Kate as they do also see the Claudette there in the distance, incapacitated off of eruption. Honestly, amazing plays here by Iconic's Plague as they have just been able to go from chase to chase to chase seemingly undeterred by all the resources these survivors have. Keep in mind, though, the Plague does need to be careful of a few different factors here. Though, so, once again, going for the mind game, we will see Claudette go for the vaults, but holding strong in the middle of Shaq undeterred by the plague however the plague will not be able to get the hit at the vault so Claudette getting mind game for the last time will go down at Shaq and I believe be placed in the basement for their second hook 
Question is now, will Kate be able to crawl away to deplete their full bleed out timer? They have roughly two minutes until they bleed out. That would mean the plague would lose a total of three points from the bleed out. That could be significant enough to give uh, Atmosphere a bit of an edge going into trial number four of set two. But we'll have to wait and see. But unfortunately for the Kate, she has not exactly made it far. And that there will be the last hook of this match. Or rather, of this set. As we do see Iconic take the 4K victory at three generators or three generators completed. With that being said, GG well played to both sides. And congratulations to Iconic for the 4K. We, though, will be switching sides and seeing Atmosphere's Plague against Iconic Survivor Team, where they will need to get a 4K at three gens to force the draw for set two or a 4k at two gens to claim victory with that being said we are going to go on a quick break but before we do as always we do want to remind you all here today that you yes you the viewers are our sponsors so that as they watch all the bits that I tip all the subs that you buy all good at supporting champions of fog and our prize pools for group a and group b with that being said we'll be back in just a bit
All right, and we are back for what is possibly the last trial of uh, this match. We got Atmosphere's Plague versus Iconic Survivor Team once again on Azarov's resting place. And the Atmosphere's Plague is going to need to get a 4K at two gens to claim victory and force a set three on Mount Ormond Resort. Not outside the realm possibility, but is certainly a tall, tall order. With that being said, though, you will not have to wait long to see what Atmosphere's Plague has in their pocket in order to try and claim victory. It will be very interesting indeed. I imagine a lot of gen regression, a lot of pressure to be had. I imagine a corrupt pool being claimed before corrupt intervention even ends, in fact. But we are going to be loading on in. Maybe? DBD taking its time. <laughs> Whenever there's a console player, it always likes to load all the way and then kind of just sit here and... Make things awkward for me as I get to just watch and like, hmm, well, I, I thought we were ready, but apparently not. Hopefully, knock on wood, no DBD doing DBD things. If so, we will uh, reload the lobby as per usual as this load screen is taken just a bit longer than normal. But looks like we were able to get on in, thankfully. No restarts required today, and we do see the plague. No double apple, though. Instead, we do see the tablet. And no sign of the survivors. Plague really trying to make full use of corrupt intervention, going to every single gen and vomiting on it to make it as contagious as possible. However, survivors are going to be taking their time, I imagine, as a quarter of corrupt intervention has already ended. And as mentioned prior, all they need to do is complete three generators. If, in instance, they are able to successfully do that, they will claim victory for this match. Jake acting as bait against the plague. However, plague not taking the bait will instead move back towards Shaq reinfecting these generators trying to find the atom that they saw earlier and just really taking their time here corrupt intervention about two thirds of the way completed we do see a Claudette here not infected however plague trying to change that as we speak Unable to do so, though, through the trees. Claudette now in chase with the plague. And looks like Plague will, in fact, get the vomit there for the infection. Plague, though, with the kick on the gen, will note that it will be highlighted in yellow. And it would appear that the Plague will step away from the chase instead, allowing the Claudette to go back. When they do, they will be aware of the existence of Overcharge. Meaning that the gen highlighted in yellow is currently going to be afflicted by Eruption as Call of Brian is banned in conjunction with Overcharge. Zarina, though, with the Sprint Burst will get some pretty good distance here. However, Claudette now fully infected will have to be careful of the plague. Zarina trying to crouch underneath that vomit. Trying to reduce the progression as much as possible. Forcing the Plague to go for the M1 hit at the window with that mid vault. Plague though, going back to the gen that Claudette was on prior. Scratch marks, though it does not appear to be blood. No! In fact, it is the Claudette there. It appears that they will be in chase. Claudette going for the pallet stun, but unable to get it. And looks like Plague will once again drop Chase here as Claudette does make their way towards the bus. These survivors, though, not going down without a fight, I imagine, will be on the opposite side of the map. Like we said earlier, these survivors only need to complete three generators in order to claim victory. Zarina doing a great job mind gaming the Plague there, will make their way towards Shaq, still injured, now fully broken. Plague. Getting a little bit turned around. Serena running into Plague. A little bit of a mind game on a mind game. Confusing them both. And it seems to be quite effective. 
We will note that Claudette here dropping their gen over on that corner there, still afflicted by Eruption. And trying to get a sense to what the plan is here for the Plague, as like we said, only three gens need to be completed. Two more from this moment in time. And there are two gens on the opposite side of the map that these spires are more likely than not working on. So this is going to be quite an uphill battle here unless they make a move soon to at least get some gen regression in. Like we said, we know the existence of Overcharge, of Eruption, Aussie Colorbrine, not Colorbrine, uh, Corrupt Intervention. Colorbrine is banned with those two. The fourth perk yet to be seen. Actually, correction, the fourth perk has been seen that they're being deadlock slowing things down by 30 seconds on the most progressed gen once a gen has been completed speaking of gen completion that there is the second gen the plague knowing they have to make a move does commit to the chase on the zarina though it might be just a little bit too late Zarina first hook of this trial and i do believe we saw a survivor over here could be the Claudette that we were seeing earlier as we will get another overcharge application on this generator, regressing it upwards of 200% over the course of 60 seconds. However, this survivor seemingly has disappeared into thin air. Plague unable to find them. Now moving over to another gen. Check on its progress, or in this case, regression, as that gen is all but regressed to nothing. Claudette, though, infected. Moving back towards the middle of the map. Plague trying to cut them off here, doing a little bit of mind gaming. However, Claudette will get the vault and potentially a quick and quiet as there was very little noise there on that vault. Also could just be DVD sound bugs, but we'll have to wait and see. The Claudette will get a decent amount of distance here, making sure that the Plague is unable to catch up for an M1 hit. However, with all this running, Claudette will move to the broken status effect, making it easier for the Plague to potentially get this down. However, Plague taking the stun and a third gen popping in the distance that there will secure the win for Iconic, as at the most Atmosphere can do now is force a draw. But since Iconic took set number one, the draw will go in favor of Iconic here today. Plague grabbing the Corrupt Purge, trying to go for a long range spray here. At the very least, boxing the Claudette into a corner and securing the down. At this moment in time, this is more or less going to be a match for their honor and for practice alike. Two gens to be completed. A gen by the hill seemed pretty well progressed. And another gen popping off in the distance. Plague in a very rough position here as we do see the Claudette go off of the hook. Potentially a unbreakable. Hard to say as they were already broken prior to. However, Zarina here trying to make use of this tile. Potentially trying to get a stun off to get rid of this corrupt purge. However... Neither side giving much in the way of ground as Zarina will make their way into the next tile. Plague with the long range vomit attempt and a little bit of mind game there will grant the Zarina a little bit more distance. However, not enough as they will go down before they reach another tile. With that, the fifth gen is completed, the one by the hill. And Exegates are pretty well split here. So at the very least, I do imagine we will see a two-man out. If Plague, though, is able to make use of their Corrupt Purge, potentially able to get a down here, though no sign of the Survivor. And we will hear the Exegate over on Shaq's side open. Plague potentially a little bit frustrated, taking a few swings. And I believe this will be the three-man out. And that is one, that is two, and the three. With that being said, GG well played to both teams. And congratulations to Iconic for taking the round three victory. With that being said, 
Thank you all for joining us here today. That there was our last match of Champions of the Fog this Sunday. However, we will be back once again on Saturday for Group A at 12 p.m. CST. So make sure to stop on by, say hi then. And for now, please join us as we are going to raid Light in the Fog. With that being said, thank you all. And I was your host, Guildspire, your commissioner. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye!